making me but it's just so has so much vapid existence. so existing so is like a relationship with you that sounds awesome actually i think that sounds like a really good thing that we should be uh, encouraging i mean that's just like wretched no it, you, don't, 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 no, no, no 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 don't do i'm not your therapist but no i thought of it myself just someone had already done it because this is this is just a cult I mean, yeah, you know this I mean? is just cultish. I, I just, yeah. Before I mean, this is just Scientology. Not only... I'm not helping people. I'm solving problems. Dude, this is just so... I, I just don't... I want to see her react to this video. I want to see her response to this video so bad. All right. So today, Kilo the Giant. He's a regular chat around here. He's a bit, been in sort of Mr. Girls community for a long time. Released a hit piece on Britney Simon. Yeah, also we know Britney Simon, the bubbles lady. Okay. She's known for she she got called a Nazi cult leader by Mr. Girl once. I think a lot of this video is about sort of that idea. About her uh she runs well, we'll get into it, but essentially you can pay a lot of money to have one on one sessions with her in Discord, and she has very strange relationships with her fans. So we're gonna we're gonna just take a look at this video. 47 minutes long, 48 minutes long. Should be good. Let's have a look. But literally, the idea that I would be running a cult is like the funniest thing. So now the meme on my channel is that uh -huh. join the Discord, it's a cult. Right? It's like a joke. Because Yeah, because if you're joking about it being a cult, it can never be a cult. That's how it works, as we all know. Because if you ironically call it a cult, that means it's not a cult. You know, like not a cult, like the meme, not a cult. <laughs> You know, guys, that's how it works, right? You should pay attention to me. If you think I'm suspicious, hate me for the real me, not the version of me in your head. I don't mind if you hate me, but you got to hate me for the real me, not the version of me in your head. I'm not a cult leader. Nobody's got time to run that cult. But hey, if you guys want to join the cult, join the Discord. Court, court. Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. My name is Brittany Simon. My name is Brittany Simon. My name is Brittany Simon. So if you're new to my content, the thing I want to show you guys or teach you guys, that's why I want to teach you how to play the game. My work is supposed to help you figure out what game and what bubble you're in. My work isn't everything you watch. Because I'm in like the, I guess, self-help bubble, I guess. If you want to become one of my callers, I will help you. I will help you. I am better than self-help. Call me. I know I'm expensive, but I'm worth every penny. I'm better than life advice itself, girl. Better than self-help. I can give you as many tools that would help somebody else, but it might not help you. She's I kind of like a therapist. Guys, she's kind of like a therapist. Be actually a hindrance to your journey. I could be the bad guy in your journey. Guys, she, she's like a therapist. Poor, mentally ill, retarded losers like me. And get their own ego therapist. Isn't that awesome? Guys, I think I need to give her $250 a month. Guys, I think I have to. Guys, please donate now. Okay, guys, this is very important. All right, I'm going to need you guys to like the stream. Okay, first of all, there's 235 people here, only about 101 likes, meaning that there's about 130 people who haven't liked the stream. It means you're totally freeloading, not donating, not putting the tiniest amount of effort in to just help support the stream, which is just insane. Oh, I'm doing this, I'm basically I'm doing this for free for you right now. That's insane. There also could be lurkers who have not subscribed to the channel, okay? If you're not in the chat, you may not have been forced to subscribe just yet. So you, you want to make sure you subscribe to the channel so you know, you know when I'm live, videos come out. You want to keep up, of course. So additionally, you can support even more, okay? In addition to your like, which I'm trusting you've, you've left a like in the time I've been speaking. I'm trusting you've done that. You can also donate, okay, through stream elements. Which is pinned in the in the top chat message there. Uh, thank you, Max, for the four ninety nine super sticker here. So that takes me on to our next form of support. You can buy super chats, super stickers. Okay, you can also buy yourself a membership, gift a membership, gift in, in several memberships at once, and have them randomly distributed among chat. <clears throat> and you should also go to discord.gg slash to join the Discord. Thank you for the four ninety nine, four pound ninety nine, Larry Lored. Go to the Discord at discord.gg slash Queeman. You can follow me on Twitter, twitter.com slash Queeman. Twitter popping off recently, guys, okay? I got this Smash Mouth tweet. I made a retarded joke. I just fired it off. I was like, this is a dumb tweet. I'm going to post it. 
where I took the screenshot of Smash Mouth interacting with Shadman briefly, and I said, this tweet popped off, guys, okay? I said, someone gotta hold these guys accountable. Smash Mouth, obviously the lead singer, is dead. Died to liver failure in the last several years. And they, immediate, they actually did immediately disavow. This was a joke about the absurdity of the witch hunt. I was, inten I was intentionally playing on the absurdity of the witch hunt. No one got that. Very few people got that. They think this is me trying to earnestly cancel Smash Mouth. And so I have got 1.5 million views on this tweet as a result. There's a bunch of people retweeted it being like, Oh, wow, we're really canceling dead people now? <laughs> because uh, satire is completely dead. So on that note, okay, did I say Reddit as well? Reddit.com slash r slash Queeman. Again, you should like the stream, which you should have done while I was talking, really. I'm going to remind you again. Reddit.com slash r slash Queeman. At the start of every stream, I review the subreddit. Very important stuff, all right? So your posts may, will be seen, will be shown on stream. And I will respond to them. You'll be able to check the stream and see what, what, did, what did streamer say about my, about my post. Thank you, thank you. Hello, everyone. Welcome back to today's podcast. My name is Brittany Simon. In today's podcast, I want to talk to you guys. This is my work. It is something I'm passionate about, and I think it's really, really helpful. So I hope it helps you today. I don't secret, have... Secret Nux Tent segment. How, how's it, how do you do a secret Nux Tent segment? A thing I want to sell you. I just have things that I think are interesting and I want to share with you. Meet Brittany Simon. Brittany is a mid-sized commentary YouTuber. As of July 2024, she has almost 90,000 subscribers on her YouTube channel and posts almost daily. She also streams four to five times a week and usually draws somewhere around 200 viewers. If we go to her website, we can see that Brittany uses a few other platforms. She does have an OnlyFans where she posts something called ethereal adult work. I don't really know or care what that means, but it seems like it's just pictures of her in her underwear. It sounds like softcore pornography is what she means, but it sounds like she means softcore pornography, but she doesn't want to she doesn't want to say that. She wants it to sound a bit better than that. Brittany also uses Patreon, which is where she makes a good portion of her income. Now the Patreon is interesting, and it's gonna come up a lot in this video. For one, the Patreon is how you gain access to the Brittany Simon community Discord for ten dollars a month. But for a modest $250, you can book a monthly hour-long private phone call with Brittany herself. And apparently the purpose of the call is entirely up to you. We'll revisit these phone calls later, but as you can see, a significant amount of Britney's presence online is hidden behind a paywall. So for many of you who aren't direct fans of her, it may be the case that you're unfamiliar with much of Britney Simon's content and body of work. I was too. And out of curiosity, I decided to investigate what Britney's content was about, what her community's like, and what goes on in her private calls with her fans. So today, I'm going to share what I found from the true Some real channel, investigative journalism from her community. Let's see how Brittany Simon has essentially written the handbook on how to exploit your fans and get away with it. Some people get lost in the role of being the good person while they're fucking people over behind closed doors. But because they built this role of being the good person, they can never see themselves as the bad guy in the story. Rater, I'm not that dumb. I'm not that dumb. Free. Hi everyone, I'm Brittany Simon. Uh, I run on the like sort of reactionary philosophy side of YouTube. And it's Stylo, what a disgusting idea, bro. <laughs> and I create content reviewing pop culture and philosophy. Well, obviously I think philosophy is the key, right? And introspection is the key to that. No matter who you are, what your aim is with the introspection, you have to have a relationship with yourself. You have to have a moment with yourself and you have to be honest about the things that are ugly about you and the things that are beautiful about you and the things that are honest and like just you have to be so you have to have such a specific relationship with yourself if you want to take advantage of your audience first things first you need to have an idea a product you can sell them for Brittany it's easy to identify what her product is Brittany's three favorite words are philosophy introspection and consciousness she pitches herself as somebody who's on a journey, who really wants to share the things that she's learned, hopefully to help you along your journey. Through philosophy, philosophy she wants to give you the tools for how to be introspective enough to achieve greater consciousness. consciousness. On its face, this sounds fine, but when you start watching Britney's content, it becomes quickly clear that she has no idea what she's talking about. For one thing, Britney never talks about philosophy in the traditional sense. If I was going to look at this in a philosophy way, 
Again, we'd go down to what is the consciousness again. Okay. Therapy helps you with your mental health and like your, which overlaps, but like we're talking about your consciousness and then what is the uh, commitment we've made to that consciousness that is your husband. When I talk about philosophy or we talk about existential dread or introspection, I'm really talking about the desire to really know the self and then to have a relationship. Oh, with but it's just all woo woo bullshit. This is just like so nothing. It's just got. But this is just my biggest problem with all of Britney's content. It's just nonstop fucking platitudes. It's just like crazy. The existence. It's clear that when Britney uses the word philosophy, she's just using it as a stand in for thinking about life. Her philosophical teachings are generally just nonsensical chains of words with ambiguous definitions, and she's sort of hoping you're just nodding your head along with her the whole time. Philosophy introspection is different from superficial self help introspection. Because you're not. In the fuck did she just say? ambiguous definitions, and she's sort of hoping you're just nodding your head along with her the whole time. Philosophy introspection is different from superficial self-help introspection. Because you're not introspecting in the depth. We're talking about depth. We're talking about more than the ego. If you're introspecting to be the best ball player, that's only in relation to specifically basketball, right? What does that have to do with the, the greater universe, the greater knowing, the greater consciousness? Yet she advertises herself okay. as a philosophy channel. It's one of the very first hashtags she uses for her content. But her channel is almost entirely about dating, drama, and pop culture. My guess is Brittany uses the term because she thinks of herself as something of a philosopher. And to call her content philosophy gives her ideas more credibility. But no, you will never find discussions of traditional philosophy on this channel. Just incoherent ramblings about her favorite three words. As for introspection, this is something Brittany talks about incessantly. She often refers to her journey of introspection, and the way she presents it is as though she, through time and hard work, self-reflected enough. We got the level system laid out real quick. What, what does Brittany think should happen to level one? A set of tools to be able to better understand herself and other human beings. As you guys know, I'm obsessed with introspection. It's a journey. It'll take a lifetime. But I do think that I'm having a real relationship with myself. Like you guys know, I'm literally obsessed with introspection. What is introspection? It never ends. After I got therapy and then after I went on my philosophy journey and after I went on my introspection journey, I realized like, okay, I needed to let go of the resentment and bitterness I had for other people's own journey. And I need to recognize like they are me on a journey just like I am. Brittany seems to think that the ideas of self-reflection and subjectivity are novel concepts that she has elevated access to. This is one of her most recurring character traits. She tries to make very surface level concepts like empathy sound advanced and complicated, as if she possesses secret, unique wisdom. My work is to prove that everyone is living in a subjective reality. Everyone is on a journey. It's easier to forgive ourselves and other people when we realize that. It seems that Brittany's years of therapy, studying philosophy, and introspection have helped her come to the realization that everybody has their own subjective experiences. Brittany's entire channel revolves around providing her viewers the tools to go on their own introspection journeys and discover these same, highly normal, surface-level ideas. Her obsession with this part of her worldview actually leaves her unable to effectively take stances on the topics she covers or give out proper criticism. But more on that later. Finally, when it comes to her third favorite word, consciousness, it's anyone's guess what exactly Brittany means when she says it. My work is to talk about the philosophy of the consciousness. That's different than a person who's having a realization of consciousness in relation to all of the universe. Specific consciousness level, and that's the you, you. Not even the general you. Are you asking me the like citizen? Are you asking me? Brittany, it's just a so it has so much to vapid. do with existence. So existing so is like lame. a relationship with your consciousness, and existence is the relationship with everything outside of your consciousness. I think your brain and your consciousness <laughs> are Brittany a consciousness. It has so much to do with existence. So existing is like your relationship with your consciousness, and existence is the relationship with everything outside of your consciousness. I think your brain and your consciousness are separate, even though your consciousness is like the computer okay. that like turns the, or your brain allows the consciousness to sort of like ignite. That's my assessment. I have diagnosed her with lack of relationship with consciousness. Philosophy, Brittany, coming in. I mean, that statement there is like pretty dumb, but like it makes Your sense that this one allows the consciousness to sort of like ignite. That's that kind of, that like you can tell what she's saying there at least. A lot of the rest, of it, I've got no idea. My assessment: I have diagnosed her with lack of relationship with consciousness. Philosophy, Brittany, coming in. She uses that word to describe souls, people, personalities, experiences. Science doesn't know what that word means, and neither does Brittany. One pattern of behavior that will come up a lot is that Brittany is constantly talking out of both sides of her mouth. And she often says things sort of like she's winking while she's saying it. 
Like how she claims she doesn't want to sell you on any of these ideas, yet consistently seems to try to do that. I don't have a thing I want to sell you. I want to help people find and have a oh, relationship man. with their joy and their consciousness. This always rubs me the wrong way. Whenever someone starts pretending that their first and foremost motivator isn't money, obviously, you fundamentally, you have to be making money. You're there to sell them something. You have found a niche that makes you money. Now, on your day-to-day, -day, you may be more driven by sort of like personal interest, or you may you may feel a, a want to help, and that, that's what you think is guiding you. But it doesn't change the fact that none of this will be happening without money. You have to be selling them something, even if it's simply watch time. You that I can't sell you a course because it's individualistic. That's why I take individual calls, right? I'm not gonna sell you anything. I'm going to give you tools that help me get exactly the lifestyle that I wanted. And I'm so grateful that I have like a lot of sort of forms of knowledge in my head. And I'm glad that I can help so many people. And while I personally think that Brittany doesn't really have much insight on these ideas that she wants to sell you, the truth is there is a market for it. And she knows that market. And a lot of people might not know what I do. I'm just a person on the internet. I discovered something about myself and I feel as a neurodivergent, queer woman in the world who has relationships from like gender to spirituality to sort of politics to everything. I found myself really confused about my place on this planet. I am older than you and I've spent 20 years of my life wanting to unalive myself. I understand, but <laughs> you don't have to stay there. You can get out of that bubble. You just have to get the tools. As far as I can tell, there are three main reasons why someone might decide to watch a YouTuber who makes serious or thoughtful content. Number one would be expertise. This is reserved for creators who have a professional or educational background that makes them uniquely qualified to talk about the subjects they cover. A good example of this is Dr. K. He has a medical degree and he's a mm -hmm. licensed psychiatrist. Brittany Simon does not belong to this group. Because mm -hmm. again, the only thing I'm a professional in is myself. The second reason you might watch someone like this would be for their perspective. You don't always need qualifications or credentials to be well-informed and good at analyzing information. Destiny's a good example of this one. He doesn't have a background in politics, but he has a strong grasp of the topics he covers, and he's a great debater. And while I'm sure that some of her audience might value Britney's perspective on things, generally speaking, I cannot imagine that most of her viewers watch her for her takes. That's how I think of it. I think of philosophy as the why of me, the consciousness of the world and its consciousness. And then I think of politics as the how that consciousness moves forward in the world and like works as a society. I think most of Britney's audience belongs to the final group. This one will refer to as the parasocial group. Parasociality is a one-sided relationship that a media user, the fan, engages in with a media persona, in this case, the streamer. Parasocial relationships are complicated, and their impact on fans is pretty controversial and not well understood. Most content creators on YouTube and Twitch engage in some form of parasociality with their communities. Even something as simple as reading a super chat is an example of a parasocial interaction. Thank you very much for the super chats. But it's commonly understood that much of the parasocial interaction that happens with fans is mostly fine, especially when it's out in the open like a super chat, and in some cases it can even be healthy for the viewer. But the bad part about parasociality is when the streamer or creator takes advantage of their fans' attachment to them, or when the nature. Okay, this is this is all setting, laying out an argument, which I mean, I I felt like I was already on board with all this stuff. Okay, here I thought like now we're getting into the more affirmative argument, the stuff that you know, just have to convince people on. Nature of the relationship is intentionally made obscure. I'll let Brittany explain. I'm not a big fan of parasocial. Uh, encouragement between an audience and a content creator because like that's the danger of parasocial is like you're not having the real relationship so you're having the one in your head but because of parasocial relationships everyone thinks everyone is closer than they are and I'm telling you right now you're not close so who exactly does Brittany try to appeal to who is it that gets drawn to and parasocially attached food shops super chatted one dollar and 99 cents this is healthy that's great to hear. Thank you for the two dollars. I'm, I'm glad you're sending me a healthy two dollars. Thank you, thank you, thank you. This is where things start to get a little messy. I know so many of you in my audience, right? Our, my VC on Discord was just talking about this, how my audience is like borderlines autistics and ADHDers. Half my audience is autistic, my siblings autistic. Wow, awesome. Like, I'm probably autistic. First thing I mentioned on a first date is, hey, I'm diagnosed. Wow, so all the people that you have in your in your one-on-one -on -one Discord calls that you charge them for, 
where the, they don't know quite where the parasocial relationship ends and the real relationship begins. They're all autistic. Well, that sounds like a great setup. That sounds like an amazing setup. That sounds awesome, actually. I think that sounds like a really good thing that we should be uh, encouraging. PTSD, I was assaulted. Hey, I was diagnosed borderline. I was a queer kid growing up in a conservative home. I'm like in the neurodivergent queer bubble. I formed mental illnesses. I had problems with unaliving myself. Brittany clearly wants certain types of people to relate to her. And the common denominator is they are typically lonely and vulnerable. Her content consistently deals with themes of mental illness, depression, loneliness, feeling marginalized. In today's podcast, we're going to explore the idea of how to process being cheated on, staying disciplined when you're neurodivergent or have chronic health issues. I worked so hard to tackle my depression, to tackle my borderline. She also talks about being neurodivergent and queer a lot. There are even hashtags in her Twitter and YouTube bio. Interestingly enough, both of these populations have been found to be uniquely susceptible to parasocial attachment. Now, I don't think there's anything definitely wrong with catering your content to a specific group of people, even vulnerable ones, but there's a difference between making content for people and making people rely on you. Not only does Brittany present herself as someone who has tools, who can offer help, who's been through the same journey as you, she also presents herself as a maternal figure to her fans. I just want to be a mom. I love kids. I grew up raising kids, doing nannying professionally. And now I call myself, I call myself Mama Simon, actually. I get to be a voice in the community that says I might not have children, in the sense that I might not raise them, but I'm happy to be a sort of mother figure or an auntie figure or a sister figure or a figure that says like, I will care for people who need a moment of care. And I became the mother of, well, the internet, right? Already, Brittany is blurring the lines between creator and fan, and she knows this can cause problems. It works on people. And I hate to say that, but like people are so susceptible because they are so desperate for a good looking, smooth, charismatic person to appeal to their vulnerabilities and in, in, in need of validation. And then all of a sudden, boom. And I think with content creators, there's like a parasocial element which confuses people. Even with me, people have a version of me in their head that isn't me. But playing a parental role and wanting to help her fans is only the beginning of her confusing her audience. Remember, okay. Brittany also has an- uh, I just, I want like a bit more than this, I think. Cause like just saying like I oh I'm I'm the I'm the mama like yeah this is like cringe, and if she is playing on autistic people it can be confusing, but yeah I just don't. I need a bit more. I need a bit more about these meetings. Only fans. Where apparently before she got married she had gone on dates with customers, and she thinks it's up to the customer to assess whether she's actually interested in them or not. To say like oh yeah we're gonna be together but it's part of the persona then it's more on the audience member to be really reasonable with how they're interacting with a persona so i think there is a very blurred nuanced line and you well that's just retarded what you can't say this while saying you've got an audience full of autists to assess whether she's actually interested in them or not to say like oh yeah we're gonna be together but it's part of the persona then it's more on the audience member to be really reasonable with how they're interacting with a persona so i think there is a very blurred nuanced line and you can't always know what you're dealing with so you know act with caution and generally you're the one who has to take responsibility you have more power you're in the in the position to exploit you are the one who should act with responsibility and not not take advantage Speaking of her husband, he was a fan she met in her Discord community. The person that I married had only seen a few of my videos because they had seen me on the internet, but they didn't watch me. They weren't a viewer. Brittany tries to downplay how much her husband was a fan of hers before they got married, but I've been told by multiple of her former fans that he was a prominent member of her community and spent a ton of time in her Discord server before they met. I'm not sure who would pay monthly to routinely hang out in a Discord server of someone they're not a fan of. And I'm not sure why Brittany would be dodgy about this, considering she's admitted part of the purpose of her channel was to find a husband. Look, I'm a content creator, and I'm not going to pretend like I wasn't hoping somebody would come across my work and fall in love with my brain and want to marry me. But the worst aspect of Brittany's parasocial irresponsibility is that she makes it confusing for her fans to know whether she is their friend or not. Remember the hour-long private calls she sells to her fans? These calls are a large portion of Britney's business, and she's routinely booked out every month. And then I have calls for the rest of the day, so I have to go do those, and I'm so excited for those. They're going to be great. 
The purpose of these calls seems to be mainly for her self-help services. You should book a call with me because I'm better than even life advice itself. But remember that the purpose of the calls is entirely up to the caller. So many of Britney's fans call her just to hang out. Like literally some of my callers, like we play video games. Like sometimes we just talk. Like sometimes it's very fun. Personally, I just think her audience of lonely, troubled people paying her $250 to hang out with her for an hour is weird and creepy. But I understand some people don't have a problem with this part. The problem comes in when Britney intentionally blurs the lines around what her relationship with the caller okay. actually is. Okay. Before we finish this chapter, let's briefly learn about one of Britney's former fans. To keep her identity private, we'll call her Alondra. Alondra unfortunately suffers from borderline personality disorder and became a frequent caller of Britney's. She developed a great amount of respect and admiration for Britney. So this is anonymous. Their okay. oh, I hope partially because of their shared diagnosis. At least some evidence. One day, Alondra messaged Britney. She was upset that she couldn't be provided with a real and meaningful friendship which she felt like she needed, and she decided to cancel her calls. Let's read Brittany's response. Hey girl, your tone is great, clear and to the point. I am not canceling the $30 level. I'm just limiting it to 10 calls a month eventually. That way I'm still offering discounted calls and regular priced calls. I respect your desire to cancel our call. I know you didn't mean to remove yourself from the call list. So if this month you still want it, we can make it work but I understand you wanting to move on. Thank you for letting me know your boundaries and desires and friendship. It's true, I can't offer anything more intimate than I can and that's limited. I respect that. To clarify, does this mean you don't want to be friends at all? Or do you just want to give me space or want me to give you more space? Dude, oh, come on, you can't be doing what? Dude. Blaze one one five nine two super shattered ten dollars. How much for a date where I gauge your interest? Uh, eighty grand. Eighty k, seventy five k maybe. We are adults. I'm open to having many friends with whom I see when I can and talk to when I can, without needing to be very close. But I also know that might not work for everyone. Please let me know so I can properly interact with you. I mean, that's just, like, wretched. Like, you can't be talking to... You can't be taking money for your calls and then blurring the line of friendship. Like, that's just so fucking weird. Like, you should be clear with them. We are friends, and we will be friends regardless of whether you're paying me. I still have time for you. And I'm going to stop accepting your money. Or, you're a customer... You are paying me to talk to me, and I'm willing to engage in whatever fantasy or whatever you want to do during the calls, but these are calls that you are paying for. This is a product I'm selling you. It has to be one or the other. That's not to say that, you know, I we can even go this far, right? It may not even necessarily be, like, inherently wrong for someone to... Hey, have calls offered that are paid, have someone come in, and then they become friends. That may not even be necessarily wrong, but you have to, you absolutely, as the person who's in control of that, you have to be making that clear. Like, this is, this is what I'm okay with. This is what we're going to be doing. Are you okay with that? Like, that's, you, you have to make that clear. We are adults. I'm open to having many friends with whom I see when I can and talk to when I can without needing to be very close. But I also know that might not work for everyone. Please let me know so I can properly interact with you. Brittany's response to Alondra is a strange mix of business, intimacy, and offers of different types of friendships that if I were in Alondra's position, I would find completely disorienting. If you are offering a service to your mentally ill fans, you should not be dancing in and out of the label of genuine friendship with them. Just finished catching up on the moist debate. Do you reckon he goes the attack sneak COVID route or I'm sorry for irresponsibly platforming route? Uh, attack sneak COVID. I think he'll do a retcon video that makes it look like he's won by including all of the clips of Sneeko saying stuff that's going to be optically damaging to him. I think that's the playbook. A friend is somebody who doesn't need to be paid to stick around. You're Thank either you for offering your fans a service or friendship. It cannot be both. How Britney treated Alondra here is a mishandling of parasociality. What I'm doing is lazy and selfish, and I'm saying it right now. I chose the easiest path, but I chose the easiest path uh -huh. for me. I don't give a fuck about any of you. Outside of what I can do to help you. 
Look, make whatever content you want, Brittany, but if you're going to market yourself towards lonely and vulnerable people because of the help you can offer them, then you need to decide what role you're going to be playing for these people. You cannot sometimes be their teacher, sometimes their mother, sometimes their wife, and sometimes their friend. And most of all, you cannot sometimes be their therapist. know because we cover philosophy and spirituality here and other things people often think i'm like trying to be like the spiritual guru i'm not trying to be anything other than a youtuber okay i like youtube i'm here to make content i'm here to do commentary that's what i'm here to do girl but obviously we have like a philosophy spin on things and look i could rebrand my whole channel to be this like soft-spoken guru that sells you a narrative only to come out years later being an asshole and i think that's the problem with these like guru types or these people selling you courses or it's not like every person who sells you a course is a bad person or every person who's a guru is a bad person but there's a very specific snaky type so she's got her ideas and she knows who her market is so how exactly does britney draw people into her community and sell her private calls we've already covered that a lot of her fans are parasocially attached to her and some of them might just come into her community through her sex work. But one thing Brittany is very good at is avoiding accepting a label for what exactly her services are. She disagrees that she offers life coaching. So like, I don't see myself as a life coach, but like Destiny does. But then when I think of a life coach, I think of somebody who's like, let me help you through your problems to get from point A to point B, which I can't guarantee because I don't have a business like that. She doesn't think people are paying her for her friendship. I think when you're being paid to be a friend, that's different. So like, I, I wouldn't call Brittany a practitioner, but I would call like a chiropractor a practitioner. It, Who's paying to be someone's what about, friend? What about Who's doing I, that? Your and audience? of course, Brittany maintains that she is not your therapist. I'm not a therapist, but I am a person who's gathered tools. Now, Brittany you, no, don't, says don't, that don't, she no, 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 don't do, I'm not your therapist, but no, no. <laughs> That shouldn't be a, that should be a, I'm not your therapist, but that should be, I'm not your therapist. Clear boundaries <laughs> Jesus. and expectations with regard to her not being a therapist. And in fairness to her, I believe she does make an effort. If I do get the vibe that they're coming to me for therapy, then that's the vibe of a, hey bro, like just to clarify, you know, I'm not a college graduate. You know, I do not have a degree in therapy or psychology or whatever. Like I don't have a license. But this is another instance of Brittany talking out of both sides of her mouth. When it comes to what she says in her content, she flirts a little too closely with the line between therapy services and whatever it is that she offers. Now, I'm not in therapy. I do philosophy work, right? So like knowing yourself, working with the like, who is your consciousness? Like, what are you doing with your life? Like, this is what I do with my callers. And I'm not surprised that some of him, my work and his work do overlap since he's on the philosophy train of like self-improvement as well as therapy, which are two different things. They just tend to overlap sometimes. And I'd go so far as to say that it really seems sometimes like Brittany wants you to think of her as something of an alternative to therapy. Remember, like, therapists help with mental health. Um, and I think when you're going through levels of introspection, you're going through something, like, more spiritual, more, like, about the, the humanhood of yourself. And therapists are legally, like, unable to always help you with that. So that's why I recommend the one-on-one -on -one calls. Check out Patreon. You might be able to find a spot. And though I am honored that lots of people mistake my channel for a therapy channel or mental health channel, most of my community is more in the therapy space. Like we all watch the therapist on YouTube and like Dr. Kirkhand and stuff. And he's collab, he's come on my channel. And so I think we're all probably in the more progressive like therapy spaces, which is why we all probably, I misuse those words too much. And people think I'm a therapist, which I'm not. I just like love therapy stuff, but I know what it's like to want to unalive. And I also now know what it's like to no longer desire to unalive. And it's, shh, guys, I'm telling, I'm telling you, it's the best. So you can't say that Brittany is a life coach or a paid friend or a therapist or anything really, but she does want to be taken seriously. That's why it's always her work and not just her content. I like my work. I love my work. Oh my God. What a dream job. I love my work. This is where I think I excel in my work. My work is about understanding humans and why they do what they do. So back to the original question, how does Brittany lure in her vulnerable audience? The answer is by being whatever it is that they want her to be. You see, Brittany avoiding having to call herself anything means that she can appeal to as many of these people as she needs to, to earn their money. Whether they need a mother, a friend, a coach, a spiritual guide, Brittany's got it all covered. And the problem with this is that by not having to commit to any of these specific roles, she avoids responsibility for all of them. Maybe you call Brittany for advice and things haven't been going well. Maybe it works, maybe it doesn't. Who fucking cares? 
They try something, it doesn't work. What does it matter? Maybe you call Brittany for support, like as a mother figure or a friend. I don't give a fuck about your feelings. I'm not your mom and you're not my best friend. And maybe <laughs> in your private call with Brittany, she dissuades you from going to therapy, like she allegedly did to Alondra, who suffers from severe BPD. I don't know why Brittany did this, but because she's not a therapist, she can't be held accountable for giving therapy. Oh man, see that's that would be really bad. But is it true? I mean, I guess I would want Brittany to kind of respond to that and say whether that's true or not. Because if you are actually in these calls dissuading people from therapy, that is like wretched. That's that's insane. Be advice to somebody like Alondra. Brittany lures in her mentally ill and vulnerable fans by being able to offer them anything they need at the point in their lives that they come across her content. But she wants it both ways. She wants to play mother, play life coach, and play therapist. But she doesn't want the responsibility of actually being any of these things. This whole, like anyone who's trying to sell you a way to do anything without the responsibility of the action you take, anyone who's trying to sell you anything, any belief system that's trying to guarantee you something without the responsibility that comes is there something that goes on? Do do BPD women hate DBT? What's going on there? Can, can someone fill me out, fill me in on this? Has anyone else been seeing this? Anyone else noticed this? Is it, is it seriously? Has anyone else picked up on this? I I feel like I've noticed this. <clears throat> I missed the point in my life when I didn't know what either of his acronyms were. <laughs> yeah, it's so real, actually. Yeah. The go-to thing they recommended. Yeah, I get that. I think Poppy was against it. I can't remember. It's part of the condition. BPD women are dangerous. Do avoid it. Yeah, well, obviously. Yeah. Google. Why do BPD women hate DBT? Ah, oh, here we go. R slash BPD. I hate DBT. Someone change my mind, please. It's so stupid. The questions are stupid. They make me feel like a little kid. The homework tasks and the name homework, seriously, are so weird. Write down and describe the things you felt throughout the day. Huh? And some of the other tasks are, like, are so, like, metaphorical. What do you even mean by that? Whenever I ask my therapist, she'd ex reply with weird examples or even more confused. Some tasks are literally pure common sense. Like, I know I should do that, but I can't. It's like when my mom tells me to stop spending so much time on TikTok. I know I should, but I can't. I stopped DBT a while ago. I ghosted my therapist, lol. But I hate that this and CBT, which also sucks, are, like, the only ways to improve or whatever. DBT is dialectical behavior, dialectic behavioral therapy. <clears throat> Supposed to like retrain your like uh, uh, and your thinking. Mm. Mm. I don't like reading things BPD women are saying. I can't lie. I really hate reading this stuff. Makes me terrified. Sends a shiver down my spine. As it should. Okay. Well. Comes with it. finding it hard to understand a lot of points you were making i'm really enjoying the streams but at the same time it feels like we are speaking completely different languages we probably are you know there are people that hate when i say we're speaking different languages it like triggers them and they're like what the fuck is she talking about nobody speaks different languages and i'm like yeah we do even if we speak english we're absolutely absolutely using words differently see how i feel like i know the bubbles make so much sense because in order for us to have this conversation we have to acknowledge a difference of perception so acknowledging a difference of perception means radically accepting that we are using language differently, even if we all speak English. So now that Brittany started building her community, her next step is to keep them coming back. After all, $10 a month to access her Discord server is good, but it's even better if she can book out all of her monthly calls. When you're building a fan base, a good way to keep your members loyal is to make them feel like they belong somewhere. If you can instill a sense of exclusivity, that's even better. I mean, it can be cool to feel like you're part of a club or even a movement. True, guys. If you if you are a dono, if you're a subscriber, if you're a super chatter, if you're a gifted membershipper, if you're a liker, if you're a, if you're a Discord member, okay, you're in an exclusive club of the smartest people online. Okay, the smartest, coolest people online. My chat. Okay, <laughs> the lights and spenders. Yes. Yeah, you too can be an enlightened spender. Okay. Somebody. There are a variety of ways to do this, and usually there's nothing wrong with it. Most creators give their fan base a nickname, they sell merchandise, things like that. 
But one common method that influencers or groups can use to build shared identity is by creating a secret language. Wise whales. These are generally words or phrases that don't really mean <laughs> anything to people outside of the group, but within the group, they're kind of like a handshake. Often these languages consist of reductive, thought-terminating phrases that communicate the group's ideas kind of like slogans. A good example of this in everyday conversation is when people say, it is what it is. It doesn't really mean anything, and it sort of prevents any further critical thinking about the topic. Or a good group example is Donald Trump's favorite mantra. Make America great again. You get to be open, but have boundaries. I'm open, but I have boundaries, right? So we say often on this channel, I'm open, but I have boundaries. Going back to a classic mantra on this channel, I'm open, but I have boundaries. I'm open but I have boundaries. And if I've learned anything from my work, it's that humans are gonna human. And again, in order for me to radically accept that humans were gonna human, which is like a big slogan on this channel, I am a radical acceptance person. I think humans are gonna human. I think all of us live in different bubbles. The world is mostly in their bubbles and we're all in bubbles, all of us, even me. I call it like cultural bubbles, ideological bubbles. And then I think about like the individual's bubble. So the philosophy bubble is different, it's global and every, Bubble talks about things differently. Bubbles, 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 bubbles. Jeez, gr shut the fuck up. I could keep going, but I think you get the idea. Brittany is actually pretty good at drilling her messaging into her viewers' heads. Her favorite phrase, humans are gonna human, is plastered all over her channel and is on her merchandise. And Bubbles is in the title of almost every single one of her live streams. Ah. But again, the problem here is that Brittany's language is highly reductive and thought terminating. Humans are gonna human is essentially synonymous with it is what it is. And yeah. she uses bubbles to simply mean different walks of life or different environments. This turns into an issue when it comes to evaluating people's behavior and issuing proper criticism of others. As I mentioned earlier in the video, her adherence to these phrases and ideas leaves her often ineffective at analyzing some of the topics she covers. Just listen to her thoughts on murder, for instance. But you do make some prescriptions, right? You do think that it's wrong to murder people. You think it's wrong <laughs> to steal from people. You would probably prescribe those things to people. But think about the nuance of murder itself, right? I have four military brothers. Sometimes you have to do things you wouldn't do in civilian life, right? That wouldn't be murder. Right? You're allowed you to take kill? the life. Well, like, murder that's is the problem. Just killing. Where mm. it's like. I kind of think war is unjust. I tell you right now, I'm getting ready to go murder my family. I hate my kids and my wife and everybody. You're just going to be like, human's going to human or what? Well, obviously, again, well, I belong to a society, right? Like I choose the countries I live in. I try to live in a place that's closest to my values. And I live in countries where like that's not allowed. And I agree with that prescription, but I also would understand if somebody was born into a different country where that's allowed, why people wouldn't understand why that's wrong. Like, just like absolutely vapid, complete moral relativity. Absolutely just like no no standard that you're like, oh no, this is the thing no one should be doing. It's just so ill. Human is like a saying that helps you as an individual not freak out when you see the world doing things that make you feel icky. It's like, hold on, they're being very human and they're doing a very human thing. Sin is human right murdering is human raping is human everything we do is human because like humans are what they are maybe britney is just too enlightened and i just need to introspect more to realize that you shouldn't freak out about normal human things like rape and murder but let's look at one example of this worldview showing up in her content this is katie bugs katie is a small twitch streamer who's most uh -huh. well known for this right so defending those values via a uh, war britney that would be just right <laughs> right it's just like such an obvious next line of logic. Like, I don't understand how people are like this. I Video from March of 2024, in which she accuses larger Minecraft streamer, George Not Found, of sexual assault. My story is about power and age and consent. The video attracted quite a bit of attention and generated lots of coverage, including a response from George, who defended himself and pointed out some inaccuracies with Katie's story. I was very cautious about it and making sure that she was comfortable throughout the process. So I had Dream reach out to get some clarification on it. So they replied back and essentially just said that it was an accident and that Katie had gotten confused on who said what. One creator who covered the situation was Lyrix, who pointed out some falsehoods that Katie made and defended George's perspective. She's literally just lying through her teeth. She's just lying. She gets caught in a lie. She makes another lie and just Lyric segment. compiling Lyric segment. lie after lie after lie. Now, I won't give too much of my own opinion on the topic, but there were several holes in Katie's story, and Lyrics' coverage was perfectly reasonable. If you want to know more about the situation, there's a link to Lyrics' coverage in the description below. Brittany Simon, however, made this video. 
In it, she's repeatedly dismissive towards Lyrix and denigrates him because of his age, essentially saying he's too immature to have a valid oh, this was epic. In situation. He's a baby boy, can't rent a car, can't do shit he wants, can't run for president. Which, by the way, according to this tweet from Brittany, her birthday is around May of 1989, making her 34 years old at the time of this video, which means she's also too young to run for president. But I digress. <laughs> So yeah, Britney was super condescending towards Lyrics. <laughs> okay, so he's a baby. He doesn't know. Like, he doesn't know things. It's okay. If he watches my video, maybe he'll learn a lot, but yeah. So Lyrics and Britney agreed to debate the situation between Katie and George a few days later. This conversation is a masterclass in how to avoid taking a hard stance on an issue and endlessly excuse poor behavior. She said it was just a typo in her script. That is a provable lie. That's what I just proved. Okay, hold on. Let me think about this. Mm -hmm. said, yeah, my brain is like, and again, this is like, this is why my channel is like She's a thinking. philosophy channel. So like, what, do you, what does this mean? What is a what does this mean when people say this? I'm okay with with it being obviously possibly a lie for sure, one thousand percent, right? I just don't know if it was internally a lie, but if it would help, I can concede and say that I could see why this could be considered a lie. I'm just I couldn't gun to my head if they're like, "Was Katie lying?" Like I wouldn't know how to answer that question. And I know this might sound like a dismiss, but it, it really is context. Um, not everyone cuddles the same or spoons the same. Well, again, I, I think we, I think the problem is like, we agree Katie did something, Katie miss, well, I think we just don't agree that Katie's being intentional. I don't know that. I can't know that. Like, I know- That was not intentional. Like she knew it was wrong and she let it be continued to be spread because it benefited her. But remember, everyone is in their own bubble. You do not think that's flirtatious though when you're spooning in bed with someone, wouldn't you like self-admit that that's flirtatious? Okay, here's a question for you. Cause like, I'm also in the queer bubbles mostly and I'm with a lot of like gay people. Like we kiss and it's not, we're not even going anywhere with it, girl. Like okay. we, you know, we're in a different- Remember, Brittany called Lyrics' coverage the worst and her obsession with her radical acceptance philosophy- I mean, she, she got completely rolled when Lyrics spoke to her and still barely gave any fucking ground. It was, it was absolutely like pulling teeth had her acting smug and condescending towards him. But when it came time to have the conversation, she had very little to actually say. Her content revolves around hammering home these types of ideas about bubbles and how humans are just going to do human things. But there is one type of situation in which Britney is comfortable being critical. You're just very dismissive well, of this, but we can move on. I don't mean to be dismissive. I think what I am is I'm not personally involved. I'm not putting my personal emotions into it i'm just speaking like i'm trying not to make it personal because it's not per it's not about me and it's not personal for britney humans are just gonna human unless she's personally slighted like when she had a falling out with destiny destiny's blocked uh -huh. for being a shit father and a shit partner and how Thanks. dare he lecture daisy over parenting when he doesn't even tuck his kid into the bed every night so remember guys turn off your critical thinking caps it is what it is Humans are getting human. Ulcerous Spiff super chatted two dollars. Good night. Sleep tight. Don't let Bree Simon bite. Thank you for the two dollars. Unless they did something to you personally, then they're just a piece of shit. So the levels aren't meant to be prescribed. They're not meant to be a judgment tool. They're meant to be a tool for you, the individual, the person that is going through something and questioning their place in the universe and asking themselves, is there a way to better understand myself and the world? And this is my tool for that, the levels. The levels are an observational philosophy that I created with a co-author who likes to remain anonymous. I've made tons of podcasts on this, like 60 plus. I've made so many videos, individual, like videos on what level people could be. So the levels represent one through five levels of introspection. So the self, the relationship we're having with ourselves, and of course, with the world, but mostly it's about you, right? I need it to be very clear that the level system is about recognizing your literal meaning and purpose of existence in relation to the universe, not just what it means to be a human. If you've heard of Brittany Simon before watching this video, then you probably know about what she calls the levels. The levels is Brittany's magnum opus. Oh, here we go. It's her proudest awesome. accomplishment. And when she watch says level one, like Steve Brittany. Work isn't everything you watch. Let's go. She's referring to the levels. <laughs> But it's also the part of her work that's been the most heavily scrutinized. And then you've got a level system where you categorize yourself at the top, and they probably feel like in, if they talk to you, you'd categorize them lower. Um, I think that harbors a lot of resentment, or they would harbor a lot of resentment as a result of that, and then people will attack you for it. 
Now the levels are essentially a system of categorizing people according to their ability or maybe willingness to be introspective. If you look at my levels video, my own philosophy linked in the description, it is very difficult. I think most people are twos on this level system. When you are in a level one, two, three, four, five, you're trying to self-examine your introspection against your extrospection, but you're trying to formulate them together to see where you are in terms of how much you consider the why. In all honesty, I don't really care enough to go into more detail about the level system. And personally, as with most of Britney's content, I just find it all pretty incoherent. But if you'd like to try to Vapid. decipher it yourself, feel free Useless. to check out Britney's video where she explains the whole thing. Unhelpful. I did want to briefly point out Anyone that it really feels Britney's like content. Britney lifted a lot of her ideas about the levels from a Polish psychologist named Kazimierz Dabrowski. And while Dabrowski's theories are far more advanced, for those that are interested, I recommend reading about his work. The similarities to Britney's levels are pretty hard to miss. Britney, of course, already thought of a defense against Wait, theories really? are far more advanced. For those that are interested, I recommend reading about his work. The similarities to Britney's levels are pretty hard to miss. Britney, of course, already thought of a defense against any allegation that she copied any part of her work. And so we were wondering, is anyone else doing this? Is anyone else discovering this? And the, the answer was yes, of course. Other people have definitely gone through the journey of the levels. And that's what's been so cool about this work is that I have come to discover so many other people have things that are similar to this. So remember, <laughs> even though... I thought of it myself, just someone had already done it. I thought of it myself, but I came I came up with it on my own, but someone had already done it. Okay, awesome. Awesome. I am explaining to you the levels. I didn't create the concept of the levels. I'm just recontextualizing philosophy and my relationship with it in a way that makes sense to my brain. But obviously, you can go to any philosopher, you can read any book. You actually can't accuse Britney of plagiarism because she's not copying other people's ideas. She's just rewording them. Great. For today, though, we don't care that much about that part. What we care about is how could it be exploitative? Just like we talked about in Chapter 4, one way that groups can keep their members involved is through something called affiliation motivation, or the need to belong and feel like you're a part of something. The unique language that Brittany and her community speaks is one good way to cultivate that sense of belonging, and the levels is kind of like another language in and of itself. But another good way to build that affiliation is to create hierarchy. Within the levels, five is the highest and one is obviously the lowest. I'm sure you've already figured out where Britney ranks herself in the levels. As a consciousness, <laughs> I'm a five. Even though I know I'm a five on my level scale because I know what I know what a five is. And this is how she feels about level ones. <laughs> ones? Of course. Useless people, people can't even figure it out. One Why wouldn't she be able people to who are a burden and drain on society and the world around them. And in your words, so useless they can't even kill themselves. I know. Which is a, mm. a... Poetic, right? It's one of the cleverest things I've ever Yes, seen. Mr. Carson. She's a terrible, terrible person, Mr. Carson. Yeah, I understand what I must do. <laughs> Again, I don't really care about the levels, and if Brittany wants to arbitrarily assign numbers to people indicating their worth, she should feel free. But what it does to her fans, who are attached to her and look up to her, is it gives them a social hierarchy. Brittany is at the top, of course, and from what I've been told, it really seems like if Brittany likes you, she assigns you a higher number, and if she doesn't, you get a lower number. The co-author of the level system was also a level 5. And Brittany reportedly also has an inner circle, which is community members she spends a lot of time with that have also been assigned a higher level. Right. So the higher levels <laughs> get privilege and more time with Britney. Really? Where's I can't oh, there should there should be evidence of that. Where's the evidence that the higher levels get more time with her? I've got to see that. And the lower levels get insulted and ostracized. Aside from this all just being weird and potentially toxic. Because this is this is just a cult. This is just like uh what is it? They do in Scientology? What's the measurement thing they do? Pathos will know it. I bet Pathos knows it. Is it Thetans? What's the science called, though? They have, like, a name for the science. Dianetics. That's it. Dianetics. Yes. Dianetics. Six. The problem here is that Brittany wants you to remember that you can progress through the levels. Ultimately, Brittany is the arbiter of what rank you are because she created the ranking system. I'm judging them based off of their ability to understand their existence, what they've chosen to do, and the position they are now in. And now to decide within their own values where they should go. And the suggestion from her content is that through the tools she provides you, you may be able to ascend in rank. So I can't make you a level five. I can just give you tools. You have to help yourself. I mean, yeah, you know this is I mean? just cult I can cult just give you the tools. I, I just, yeah. And a big part of her private calls seems to be to help her fans navigate the levels. Kelsey says, when you do calls, do you chat about things like how to go from level three, four, and five? So 
<clears throat> my level system, yes, I talk about anything you guys want to talk about, really. So, Brittany's entire branding revolves around this level system, where she's at the top, and your value in the community is correlated to your level. She bestows levels to her fans, and tends to show preference and spend more time with people that are ranked higher. But you can also pay her $250 a month to try to learn the tools to ascend in your ranking. The levels in Britney's community awesome. just function as a social hierarchy. And if you're willing to pay for the I mean, this calls, is just Scientology. You not only can potentially buy social status, but also Britney's attention and approval, which makes the levels just another way of exploiting parasocial attachment for financial gain. We've covered a lot of ground already, but the best part of Britney's handbook is the last chapter. Britney yo, isn't I aware got, of any of these. Yo, guys, this is huge. I just got my Marvel Rivals access. Guys, this is huge. This is crazy. Cra crazy stuff is happening right now, guys. Okay, that's important. Criticisms. In fact, she's heard them all before. She just doesn't have to care. So I think when people criticize me, they see me as evading and I see them as disrespecting. If you want me to be open and vulnerable with you about the fact that I cry, you're not owed that vulnerability. I am resentful at the idea that the internet thinks they get my tears. But congratulations, I just admitted publicly that I do cry about it because I do. Because it's frustrating when you work so fucking hard in your life and you sacrifice and you you accomplish beating suicide and your borderlines in remission uh -huh. and you're fucking killing it. And the only criticism I get is like, there must be something wrong with her because she seems happy. You're running a cult. You're running a cult. That's I don't give the... Brittany Simon credit for much, but I will give her credit for this. She is very, very good at avoiding criticism, and she is highly manipulative if you try to corner her into accepting responsibility for anything. There are two parts. The first one is how good Brittany herself is at talking her way out of situations. For starters, like we covered earlier, how Brittany avoids labeling her services anything intentionally to avoid the responsibility of those labels. We're just out here making dumb content, having fun. Literally, I'm just a YouTuber. Say it with me. Brittany Simon is a YouTuber. Look, I'm just a person. I'm not an expert in anything. I'm just an expert in my life. She also often tries to put distance between herself and the outcomes of her services by calling herself just a tool and saying she can't guarantee you anything. But like, I don't know how people get to anywhere. I give you tools and if the tools help, great. Remember that I'm just a tool and it might not be me. And that's why when I do core work with people like on my calls or we talk about it and again, like I'm just a person having a conversation, something that worked for me, no guarantee it will work for you. You see, Brittany often tries to just say that she's not doing something to absolve herself. But it's just so snaky. But sometimes she slips up and tells you what she actually means. I can't guarantee your joy. I can't guarantee a good outcome. I can't guarantee peace. I can't guarantee anything. But I can guarantee you, if you go through the journey that many of us have been through, you will reach a point of joy. You will reach a point of understanding the self. I want to help people. I'm not helping people. I'm solving problems. Let me help you through your problems ah, to get from point. What? I'm not helping people. I'm solving problems. Dude, this is just so, I, I just don't, I want to see her react to this video. I want to see her response to this video so bad. A to point B, which I can't guarantee because I don't have a business like that. I will care for people who need a moment of care. I don't give a fuck about any of you outside of what I can do to help you. But the most pure form of Britney slipping out of criticism is when she's backed into a corner. She'll use absolutely any defense at her disposal. But it's what humans do. It's like a part of the, it's a part of our, it's just normal. People fall in love with you. They mistake who you are. They put you on a pedestal. So you take them down, you hold them in your arms. You go, that's not how we're doing it. Pat them on a the head and you send them on their you way. You understand the insanity of saying that you don't want people to put you on a pedestal when you, your philosophy is a level system one through five and you yourself are a level five yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's that's the do you get the joke do you get like i didn't do what this you, on purpose i really genuinely gave it numbers so i would remember their names but also why don't you change it what do you get the joke what what but there was no joke where was the joke five. Yeah, yeah yeah that's that's the do you get the joke do you get like where was the joke there's no I really joke genuinely gave it numbers so i would remember their names but also why don't you change it well, I can't change it. It's already done. I ain't gonna go back and redo all my work. Like, it's too late. We don't even know what we're doing here on this stupid fucking planet. I'm trying my best to share the knowledge I learned. Over time, people have decided to come to me. Our lessons are really fun. You can call them lessons. I don't give a fuck what you call them, girl. Whatever makes you happy, right? Same with sex work. Whatever, however you want to view it, I don't care. Just let me do what I want to do. If you're I so worried about what I'm doing 
and I know you are, then admit it. Admit that you want to control me and control my life. Am I even responsible if they're an adult and they just don't have to watch the YouTube video <laughs> or internalize it? Dude, she's just so... Dude, this is just evil. Or care? I, I, I just, like, if they think I am... I forgot how bad those fucking conversations were, man. Those, honestly, those were some of the craziest Miss Girl conversations. Shit, I can't believe Destiny is such a bitch. I remember just like that, like that must have been, you know, part of losing, losing any respect for, well, not losing any respect, but losing a lot of respect for Destiny, I think, looking back. Just the gunk guarding in those conversations where he's giving it a pass when it's so clear what's going on. And she's like making the worst excuses in the world. Like they're saying, you want to control me? I, I, imagine, imagine this, right? You rape someone. And then they're like, just admit you want to control me and you want to control my life when you tell me not to rape people. You want to control me. You want to control my life. You don't, you're not okay with someone living their best life. Causing harm, why would they listen to me? Well, because in their bubble, they have to listen to people who cause harm so they can stop the people that cause the harm. So it's like this self-fulfilling prophecy of pain where people spend a lot of time in conflicting bubbles trying to convert those people because it hurts their bubble instead of just accepting that people are different and they might need a different path to reach that help. You know what I'm saying, Jellybean? But the second part of how Britney avoids criticism is the more important part. It's very simple. Her content teaches her audience how to not think critically about others. So the people that Britney's exploiting are the ones that are the least likely to notice. I can see the issues. And I do my best, but it's the woman Destiny trusts with his bank account. Real. People are gonna people max. I can't Real. live my life and limit myself and how I can impact my community because a few people might not interact with me in the way that quote unquote saves them. No judgment, girl. Humans are gonna human. You want me to change okay. my whole fucking life because a couple <laughs> people are retarded and they get they're mentally ill and they cling to me? It's life. Grow up. Right? Bubbles. Nothing matters. We're all gonna die. It also insinuates a a a, a type of investment that I have in people that I don't. I don't care. We are nobody. We do our best, and sometimes should... people get hurt. That's life. Grow up. There is a part of a human mind that for a second lives in all of us that says, you know what? Humans are fucking dumb. Oh my God, they're so dumb. They just give their money away. They just give their bodies away. They give their kids away. They're, they're dumb. They're really dumb. I'm going to take advantage of those dumb humans. And then they go about trying to take advantage of those dumb humans. So, what have we learned? Brittany Simon has written a very effective handbook for how to exploit a fan base. First, you need a brand. Ideally, this is something that requires no expertise and can't be logically challenged, like something spiritual. So philosophy is about the consciousness, the self. Introspection is about the self. Then you need to understand your market. How are you going to make people relate to you? Lots of people in my audience have been traumatized. I'm like in the neurodivergent queer bubble. And all my life, since I was about eight years old, I had desired to unalive myself. After that, you need to find a way to draw them into your community. And you want to talk to somebody who will not judge you, call me. I am the perfect person to talk to. And that's why I think I like doing my calls. It can feel like we're friends. Like I'm a doing therapist, it. a sex worker, a priest. <laughs> and whatever they need me a to lover. be. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I get it. I'm a Britney. I'm whatever you need me to be. Now you want to make them feel like they don't belong anywhere else. Uh-huh. You can start by teaching them your own tribal language. Radically accept humans are going to human. I'm this not a therapist. I'm a priest. Oh, dude. Wretched. 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 This Disgusting. is life. Bubbles, 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 bubbles. Radically accept humanity for what it was. Humans are going to human. I am open, but I have boundaries. And it's also a good idea to create a social hierarchy. If you don't no, my level system is called the levels. I already made an amazing video about it. Yeah, most people are twos and have a two understanding of their conscious. I have a two dollars. I'm not bragging. Tatius super chatted two dollars. Marvel rivals shut off stream after this. No, probably not. Ability to criticize you. But I've definitely gotten messages from the internet saying like, Britney's the most evil person who's ever existed. I was like, <laughs> fuck, if I'm evil, what is anyone else? Like, you live in one bubble? I live in a bubble. In my bubble, this is how we fuck. In your bubble, you fuck different. Girl, that's great, no judgment. But you're judging okay, the way but, I fuck right now, and it's annoying me. Fuck your audience holding you accountable. Only your morals can. No offense to my audience, I love you, but you can't hold me accountable. Only my values can. Uh-huh. If you follow these steps, you've created what a values? perfect exploitative ecosystem. You've made vulnerable people depend on you, and you made them feel like you could offer them anything they needed. And you're getting a check from them every month.
And the best part is your teachings have trained them to accept whatever you do because humans are just going to human. But is that all there is? Is there anything else we can learn from the Brittany Simon handbook? Let's go back and look at our table of contents. Does any of this look familiar? Some of you who are studied in psychology might have already guessed Brittany's final lesson. This is how you form a cult. Wow, damn. Real? sex cult join the discord for ten dollars a month you can join the sex cult we talk about philosophy your mom and so much more um but i embrace the meme because i think it's funny now of course some people are gonna be like oh my god Brittany simon has a cult and those people were never gonna be in my audience anyways because you don't know what a cult is you dummy like if you don't know what a cult is you were never gonna be in my uh, audience yeah sure okay i mean yeah obviously i already agreed <clears throat> Jesus, already agreed to this video. Already agreed with most of this video. Jesus. I don't have a whole lot to say, but it's a good video. Laying it out well. I want to see Brittany uh, uh, reply to it. I want to see that, that stream. That's going to be the real... That's going to be the real content, I feel like. That's what really matters. That's going to be the funny part. Uh, yeah, remember to donate to the stream to help Keel out, okay, guys? Guys, make sure you go and like the video. I'm liking the video right now, in fact, on my other monitor where I'm Thanks. signed in. I found myself. I've just liked the video. Make sure you are doing the same, okay? Very important. Very important stuff. Oh, that's a 24-hour timeout. That's no problem. Okay. Anything remotely that feels like concern trolling or annoying, you're going to get 24 hours. If you say something like, oh, you stop smoking, or are you okay? You sound tired today. Stuff like this, this is an instant 24-hour. Just don't be fucking annoying. Holy shit. Holy shit. I'm not Brittany Simon. You're not my friend. Do not give me life advice. Do not give me health advice. Do not ask me if I'm okay. Do not ask me if I'm tired. No, I'm not going to share it with you. It's not I don't want to be asked by you. I'm not Brittany Simon. I'm not your friend. Pay me $250 a month if you ask me those kind of questions, okay? That's minimum. Minimum. Bare fucking minimum. I'll give you one. Nice vid kilo. Thank you for the $4.20. Thank you for the $4.20. Okay. Right.